The Tākaka Hill, not far from Motueka, is the gateway to northwest of New Zealand's exciting South Island, the Tasman Golden Bay area. Hi guys, I'm on top of the Tākaka Hill on the Collingwood side. It's one mother of a hill, it's one of the biggest climbs in New Zealand. And this morning it was pouring with rain and the 10 day forecast is for rain, so I'm counting my blessings. But anyway, uh, out here, that's towards the top of Farewell Spit on the uh, top western side of the South Island. Anyway, I will be going there shortly, but right now I'm just going to turn the camera around. I want to go up in there. Machuika in the Tasman Bay, Takaka Hill, we're on that corner there and we've just been looking across to these mountains here. Your mission, should you accept it, is for us to follow the Takaka River, the 16 kilometres up the Cobb Dam Road to the hydro station here. From the hydro plant, we follow the Takaka River for 10 kilometres up through a very slow, circuitous gravel road to the observation point up the top. From there, it's three kilometres down to the dam. From the dam spillway, to the head of the road, to the end of the road, there's a further eight kilometres. We're heading into the Cobb Dam Road from the Upper Tarkaka Valley with the added pleasure of the Tarkaka River to keep us company for the next 16 kilometres. Curiosity got the better of me and I ended up chatting to Francis Povey, a dedicated and creative musician who was busy helping prepare a multi-stage three or four day rock festival. We enjoyed an interesting conversation. I'm going to paint that all tonight because we've got the projector and stuff ready to go so oh, wow. yeah, I haven't actually uh, just done the colour but it's in my head I'm just going to like paint it. Once called the Gathering and now renamed, this alternative rock concert used to take place on the Can-Am Road into the famous Harwoods Hole from the top of the Tarkaka Hill. The Gathering Festival used the Can-Am Road from 1996 for five years. A serious storm created havoc and many people suffered severe exposure. The following two years, 2001 and 2002, were relocated here but until now, I couldn't tell you how many have been held, if at all, until very recently. Rhythm and Vines, B 
Big Day Out and other concerts sprung up and their popularity would not have helped the gathering to survive in the in-between years. I reckon you can't beat a concert in the countryside away from the cities. Francis, your heart was in the right place. Nice talking to you. Cruising along on a 26 degree summer's day, exploring is the best fun you can have without laughing. Me and Black are enjoying every corner we turn and there's lots of them. I reckon if I was interested in trout fishing, I'd be down by one of those rapids or deep slow moving pools where the rainbow trout cruise around. I must admit I'm partial to a bit of smoked trout. Not a huge race of water. No, oh, there's two of them. The amount, the fact that it comes down vertically um, would have a heck of a lot of generating power. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff, eh? Directly in front of you on the other side of the bridge used to be four houses and a hostel that accommodated the workers and their families. Modern technology allowed the power station to run automatically with minimum supervision. So, no houses. The Cobb Power Station was commissioned in 1944 and is still on the national grid after 75 years. From here, it's an 800 metre climb and 10 kilometres to the top with gravel all the way. With lots of tight corners, you just never know who's coming the other way, so I'll play it safe and enjoy the cool bush. Go and check out what's inside. It's an information kiosk. Hmm. Those must have been the pipes we saw coming down. That's the Tarkika River that we've been following through. 
Cobb River into the Takaka River. That's the valley they made into the into a dam. And there it is. It must have been the building we saw down by the little bridge to nowhere where I said the houses were. And that, and that scoop thing out at the front, that must be the turbines. Oh, <laughs> amazing. Well, I'm keen to get down there and have a look. That's solid steel. Wow. Look how thick it is. Stainless steel cast. Gosh, that's an amazing uh, bit of engineering. Yep. Oh, that's what I was looking at. I was wondering to get over to there. Ministry of Works Power Division Benchmark Number WN1DD. Pretty cool, eh? What's the time? 10 to 5. Good couple of hours of sun. Two and a half hours of sun left, I'd say. Hostel has facilities for school groups and the like to enjoy an educational wilderness experience and I believe the two houses are used by the power company. The dam took four years to build and was completed in 1956. Sadly, during the construction, nine men lost their lives. At 784 metres above sea level, this hydro water storage is the highest in New Zealand. From the dam, the causeway directs water through a tunnel system into two steel penstocks that can be seen running down the hill to the power station, a distance of four kilometres. Today, has there been anywhere where an average rider on any reasonable bike couldn't safely ride all the way to Road's End? Over there, by the river, is a really cool dock camping area with toilet. For those that love the mountains, there are half a dozen really good tramps in this area and you can use the comfort of Trilobite Hut. The joy in re 
reaching a destination is making the most of the journey. When all is said and done, the big question should be why take the journey in the first place? For me, every moment on a motorcycle is an adventure. We took the opportunity and reaped the reward because I would have loved getting some drone video today but I had to replace my phone a few days ago and I couldn't get the app working. Well, that's the Cobb River Hydro Scheme. Hope you enjoyed it. Something different. I just don't know where this fine day came from. It was a shocker this morning. I can't believe it. But, you know, if you stay at home in rainy weather, this is what you can miss out. So I don't. Not unless it's crazy weather. There's so many times I've gone out in bad weather and it's turned out perfect. More so than not, so you know, I just go out and do it now. You get a bummer every now and then, but then in a perverse way you enjoy it, you sort of take up the challenge, you know. Yeah, so anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, it's different, it mightn't be everybody's cup of tea, but. Uh, if you can and leave a comment.